We have the new Space Black MacBook Pro with the all new M3 Pro chip. Honestly, I was on the fence of covering this product after the Scary Fast event that actually went by scary fast because Apple Silicon chips have been coming out at scary fast speeds. Now, it's going to be the last time I use that analogy, but honestly, it's true. We've had two versions of the MacBook Pro come out just this year alone. And if you're a subscriber of the channel, you know that I've been using and covering the M1 Max for over two years now and I'm absolutely loving their performance. And to give you some context, if we are new to one another, of course, I make videos here for YouTube, but I also freelance creative work for clients that could stem from video as well as for talk and I'm not a camera channel, but even though I do love them, the Sony equipment that I do use is very intensive. And the Macs that I've been using range from the M1 to the M1 Ultra. I've also even reviewed a couple of the M2 products, such as the iPads, as well as the MacBook Airs. And then the night before Halloween, we had the entire family of M3 chips just launch. And I've never even been disappointed with the performance of any of the older chips. However, the one thing that did tempt me to upgrade after only two years was it actually not the space black color. I'd probably still just get silver. It's actually the storage size. You see my M1 Max has two terabytes of storage. Believe it or not, that's only able to hold about three to four Final Cut projects before you have to start moving things around. And first world problems, I know, but man, I really wish I went with a four terabyte model. And then although this is not the four terabyte model and it's not silver, this is the M3 Pro with 18 gigabytes of unified memory and one terabyte of storage. Now this particular model has not been getting at all a love on the internet, but I do think it's a great MacBook to invest in. But let's go ahead and get started with the unboxing experience for those who have just clicked on the video to watch that. And then we could discuss why I and perhaps you should give this model a chance. And unboxing a Mac just doesn't get any cleaner than this. You have two paper pull tabs and a good shimmy to remove the lid. Well, the MacBook Pro itself is protected by a waxy like paper. It comes with a 96 watt charging brick, which is pretty awesome. Color matching MagSafe and of course, black Apple stickers and although the experience visually looks the same every single time you watch it it just feels and sounds so good and I don't have anything space gray here in the studio to compare it to a lot of my tech is silver or white but I'll let you see the two color options that are available for the M3 Pro as well as the M3 Max now a lot of people on the internet are saying that this just looks grayer space grayer I think it looks pretty black to me and the new anodized coating to help with fingerprints or smudges or oils from your fingers it does seem to be doing pretty good. I mean, I'm touching and you kind of see it there for a moment and then it fades away. I am curious of how it will do with scratches over time. I did ding up my silver model here. I'll see if I could give you a good macro shot, but I scratch it up pretty, pretty bad there. And I'm just curious of how the space black will do if it does get any scratches. Will the silver bleed through? Of course, I'm not gonna test that, but just throwing that out there as a caution. But let's go ahead and get this guy booted up for the first time. And while that does its thing, we'll actually just set it off to the side so we can just talk about some of the specs. Starting with the base MacBook Pro with the M3 chip, which now replaces the original 13 inch with the touch bar. I also think that's a fantastic pickup because you also get the convenience of the ports and the stunning XDR display at a lower price tag. And again, I don't get into the Twitter drama, but eight gigabytes of unified memory is not like Intel or AMD memory. But if you do want to future-proof it, that's when I would probably just move up to the M3 Pro where you get the extra Thunderbolt port, 18 gigabytes of unified memory, and it unlocks a space black color. But it's also pretty cool that the base M3 model now has 512 gigabytes of internal starting storage. I'm really excited to try out the M3 Pro. I do think last time I did overdo it by getting 64 gigabytes of unified memory in the M1 Max. But I'm curious to see if this 18 gigabytes of unified memory is able to handle my workflow so that way I could just invest in storage over RAM or we're just gonna have to see in a follow-up video. Now, if you are new to Mac or transitioning to a new Mac, doing so with iCloud and Mac OS is super quick and easy. I'm already in here just after a few clicks of a button. Things are still populating in the background because of the cloud. But as you can see, gorgeous display, but we're gonna have to do something about this wallpaper. It is just, it is just not my thing. All right, now I think that looks a little bit better there. Now, cosmetically, not much has changed aside from this base black color. The screen does get a little bit brighter for SDR content, 600 versus 500. 
keyboard trackpad, absolutely fantastic. Uh, we do have Touch ID. It would have been nice if they had squeezed in some Face ID right there in the notch, uh, maybe even cellular. That would have given people with M1s or M2s even more reason to upgrade because you would have some hardware improvements, but everything's underneath the hood. Speakers are always absolutely fantastic. Sometimes if I'm moving around the kitchen, I just rely on the MacBook speakers. I don't even use the HomePod or the Sotos. We do have three Thunderbolt 4 ports, headphone jack, MagSafe, which I'll probably never use. It'll stay coiled up just like this for when I do upgrade and sell the device. And HDMI port, card reader, I really hope the card reader is better than the M1s. I would say it would work 60% of the time. I'd have to insert, reinsert. It's just a hassle. Sometimes I would just go ahead and use the dongle to spare myself the time. So I really hope that that got a little better. It's also really weird because it works great on the Mac Studio. I don't know if that was a faulty thing for the M1s or maybe it was just my device, but I hope it'll work better here. But if you are coming from an Intel Mac or perhaps you damaged your M1 Pro or M1 Max, or like me, maybe you need some more storage because you didn't spec it out correctly the first time around, this is a great device to upgrade to, but just don't let that FOMO get to you, even for the space black color, because Apple devices, Mac computers will last you five to six years, again, as long as you spec them out correctly the first time around. But in order to see if I did spec mine out correctly, go ahead and subscribe for the full review where we could test out Final Cut, the new gaming mode for Mac OS, and anything else you'd like to see, just go ahead and leave it in the comment section below the like button. Personally, I'm really curious to see how the SD card slot will perform compared to the M1 Max. I know it seems small and trivial, but it would really be a big life improvement. But this is where I'm gonna leave it. Again, please go ahead and hit that like button. The channel needs all the engagement you could get. And until next time, See ya.